moving the table sections together. Carefully move the tables together so that the guide pins insert into their matching holes. This should allow initial engagement of the 7th eighth of an inch connecting bolts on both the top and bottom of the table by hand. Be careful not to over torque the bolts initially as this may cause binding of the other bolts and misalignment of the table sections. Once all of the bolts have been started, begin tightening the bolts by one half to one turn using the supplied 7th eighth of an inch open end wrenches or comparable tools in a sequential order around the circumference of the table to slowly draw the two table sections together. This is an iterative process. To assure the two table sections are drawn together as parallel as possible along the top and bottom. This gradual tightening will also help prevent damage to the threads and prevent the bolts from binding. Continue hand tightening the bolts until the two faces come in contact with each other. Continually inspect the gap between the table sections to verify uniform closure of the table sections. Also, be certain that the bolt heads remain centered between the table sections. If any bolt heads are touching either doubler plate, it may cause binding or misalignment. After all the bolts are uniformly engaged and the table sections are in full contact, use the recommended staggering tightening sequence to apply final torque of 60 foot-pounds to all bolts. This sequence helps ensure uniform torque loading and proper mating of the plate. It is important that this sequence be followed carefully. Engage final isolator support or legs. After the table sections are fully assembled, use a level to adjust the height of the isolators or support legs so they fully support the table before removing the wheeled supports. After the table is fully supported and level, remove wheel supports and install any airlines, mounting clips, and leveling valves according to the leg installation guidelines. Final support leg and leveling valves are determined by table system shape and load distribution. As a reference, here are a few of the most popular custom table configurations and the recommended leg and valve locations. In this first example, an end-to-end -end doubler system is shown being supported by four S2000 isolators, which have a 2,000-pound load capacity for each isolator. The lab air supply line is connected to an air regulating filter, or ARF, that regulates the air into the isolation system and also helps keep the supply air clean. The output of the ARF is delivered to three leveling valves that are used to define the plane of the table. The two isolators on the left share the output of valve one, while the isolators on the right are controlled by individual valves, valves two and three shown. This three valve configuration is standard regardless of how many legs are supporting the system. Including more than three valves in any system can cause instability and make it very difficult to properly level the table system. What is also indicated in the stability triangle, which is formed by the placement of the control valves, individually controlled legs form corners of the triangle and the other corner is located between the isolators that share a leveling valve. It is within and around this area that the majority of the system load should be located to provide optimal performance. If a larger load triangle is desired, the system legs should be located further apart. In this next example, an L-shaped doubler system is shown being supported by six S2000 isolators, three for each section. Again, the output of the ARF feeds three leveling valves for the system, but because there are six legs in total, each valve is used to control two legs. The two legs at the top of the doubler are controlled by valve one. The two legs at the far right are controlled by valve three and the remaining two legs are controlled by valve two. This design creates the largest stability triangle possible. In these more complex systems, it is critical that the design of the stability triangle be carefully considered so that the system can be properly leveled and stabilized. In this final example, a T-shaped doubler system is shown being supported by six S2000 isolators. As in the previous example, each leveling valve controls two isolator legs, and in this configuration, the pair of legs at the outermost sections of the table are controlled by valves 1, 2, and 3. This creates the largest stability triangle possible for this system shape. Regardless of the size or shape of the table system, the basic components are the same. The main air supply should be passed through some type of air-regulating filter. The ARF 
should feed only three leveling valves, and those leveling valves should be configured to supply the optimal number of isolators to create the largest stability triangle. Also be sure that pneumatic legs are floating at the proper height and are level for maximum performance, and if needed, adjust the leveling valves or supply pressure according to the isolator installation guidelines. For additional assistance with leveling valve locations or airline configurations, please refer to the installation manual, online support, or contact Newport Technical Support. Your new table system is now ready for use.